Good evening and welcome to the Year 9 Information Evening for 2021. My name is Christy Harvey and I will be your MC for this evening. We're going to start off with a welcome to country. We wish to acknowledge the custodians of this land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and their elders past and present. We acknowledge and respect their contributing culture and the contribution they make to the life of this city and region. I'd now like to go through the agenda for the evening. We are going to start off with our senior school principal, Mr. Neil Bailey, our head of year nine, Mr. Callum McGough, year nine year level leader, Darcy Valance, year nine year level leader, Nadia Portella. We will then finish off with a Q and A. So if you have any questions throughout the evening, please feel free to pop it into the chat box and we will endeavor to answer them at the conclusion of the session. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Mr. Neil Bailey who is our senior school principal and our, sorry, apologies for that, our senior school assistant principal, Ms. Sonia Goodacre. Further to that, we have our head of year nine, Mr. Callum McGough, year level leader again, Nadia Potella and Darcy Valance, another year level leader. So now you've got some faces to those names that I've read out in the agenda and you'll be seeing them shortly. I would now like to pass on to Mr. Bailey, who is our senior school principal. Good evening, my name is Neil Bailey and I'm the Senior School Principal here at Hazel Glen College. I'd like to welcome you to our, our Year 9 Information Night. Year 9 is universally agreed by educational researchers as a time of significant change, cognitively, physically, socially and emotionally. It's a time that students transition physically and mentally and grow as young people. Hazel Glen College recognises the importance of relationships and deeply knowing our students and supporting them through this stage of their life. Having the knowledge and ability to recognise the needs and also the expectations of adolescents during this time is absolutely critical. Research has shown that Year 9 students benefit from a stimulating, challenging and rewarding curriculum that caters for the diversity in learning styles and abilities. A pedagogy that recognises and rewards students' strengths, providing them with a supportive and nurturing learning environment where they can take calculated risks knowing that guidance and support is always available. The ability of teachers to build trust, honesty and respect is never more important or more difficult to achieve. Students in our Year 9 programme are provided with learning opportunities that take them beyond the school boundaries on a regular basis, relating theoretical learning in the classroom to its relationship within the real world in which we live. Students are given opportunities and responsibility as community members to interact as global citizens and practically investigate and choose how to engage with positive actions. Our students are treated as young adults, but also guided as developing teenagers in their abilities and decision making, which leads to independence. Our regular city experiences allow students to learn about the culture and history of Melbourne as well as undertake exploration, discovery, and develop independence in train travel and behaving in public. They also apply learning in school to the wider world outside the four walls of the classroom. That helps students connect learning in a very real sense. Students additionally undertake an intensive experiential learning program with one day per week given over to experiential learning, either as excursions, incursions, or through student activities at the college. Whilst COVID restrictions and remote learning have hindered our programme this year, we have planned for a return to a more normal programme in 2021, but one that has both COVID safe precautions as well as a backup plan in case of any possible disruptions. A key part of the programme is the focus camps that mark the start of each term. They are one night away at a camp in Warrandyte and are incredibly valuable to students in terms of team building, relationship development with both their class as well as their teacher. In addition, the Year 9 expedition runs for six days in June and travels in 2021 to the Murray River. It includes canoeing, problem solving, bushwalking, but making lifelong memories and is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Our Year 9 programme offers many opportunities that will lead to both academic and personal development across the year. It is absolutely an expectation that all students are active participants in all aspects of the programme, as this, this is where the most valuable gains are achieved. I'm incredibly proud of the Year 9 programme and what has been achieved over the past four years. 
Our student parent feedback has been overwhelmingly positive about the personal development and support that our students have had as they move through our standalone Year 9 programme. I will now hand over to the Year 9 team who will share further and more specific details about the programme. Hello, how are you? So, my name's Callum McGough and I'll be the head of Year 9 uh, in 2021. And look, I just really want to say firstly that oh, I, I can't wait uh, to work with your children next year and, and we are really looking forward, um, myself and the year level leaders, to, to getting into this program with them and having some great experiences. So that really leads me to my first question of the evening. So why your Year 9 program? So I guess we have a Year 9 program because we want to create experiences like you see on the screen. Um, we know this is a really crucial time for your children. Um, we know that there's a lot of things going on in their lives and sometimes school is not the number one priority uh, in their lives and, and we respect that and we understand that. So what we want to do is we want to provide a program that not only challenges and stimulates them academically but also allows to, to build the holistic student. You're going to hear that word quite a bit tonight um, in terms of building the students holistically. We want to provide them with experiences where, where we're not only um, allowing them to grow academically, but we're allowing them to grow as people. We talk a lot about character in the program and building character because these years are super important and crucial in who our students and who our children are going to be when they're adults. A lot of the habits that they form now in year nine, they're the habits that are going to stay with them into adulthood. So we provide this program now because we want to make sure that we're building them as people as well. And we really see the effects of it. Um, we quite often see year nines coming back um, from senior years coming back to our program and they build real connectedness in the school, which is something that we really want to build with them. So what does year nine look like? So your child going into year nine, what would a general week look like for them? So if we switch over to the weekly timetable, this is what a week will look like for your child. So four lessons of English, four lessons of maths, three of humanities, uh, three lessons of science, two of PE and health. You'll also have your elective sessions, so students will get their electives. They'll have two different electives each semester. But the one I really want to highlight there and the one that we're going to talk about a lot, so myself, uh, Mr. Valance, the year-level leader, and Ms. Portell, the year-level leader, is we're going to talk to you a lot about experiential learning because to me personally, that's the real highlight of our program. We do some real fantastic activities and some real fantastic things um, with your child and we provide them with some fantastic experiences. So what does experiential learning look like? So for 9A to H, they'll have their experiential learning on Wednesday. For 9I to M, they'll have it on Friday. So we have two different experiential learning days. And from term to term, it looks a little bit different. So in term one, we'll have a focus camp. I won't say too much about that because Mr. Valance will come on uh, later and talk about those. We also have city orientation activities. So we'll go in with city experience. I'll talk a little bit more about those later. And we also do our Morrisby assessments. Uh, so one of the real good things about year nine is we start to talk to students about pathways. We start to talk to students about direction. We start to talk to them about their careers because we know that's a real crucial thing for them. In term two, we have another focus camp. So you will see there that we have three focus camps across the year. We do personal best, uh, a real highlight of the program and a real highlight for the students, one of their favourite things that they do. But again, Mr Valance will talk a bit more about that later. And we also go on the expedition. In term three, we do our community projects. We return to city experience and then we have a real careers focus in that too. And then finally, we finish with focus camp and city experience um, in term four. So now what we're going to do is myself and the year level leaders we're going to take you through in a bit more detail what some of these experiential learning activities are because when we're looking at your students these are the things that are really going to excite them and really going to make them uh, want to come to this year nine program and it's what they've been hearing about for so long so let's have a little bit of a look at it so one of our main ones is city experience so city experience is trips that are designed to align with the year nine curriculum and experiential program focus each term so what do we do on city experience it can really vary. So at the start of the year, we start to look at city orientation. So we introduce the students to this and we teach them how to be a part of that city community. Um, how are you going to interact around people? How are you going to take public transport? How are we going to get there in the morning? Um, all really important questions and things that we teach these kids. But we also bring the classroom to the city as well. So 
One of my personal favourite activities is that we do trigonometry in the city where we apply the um, understandings of trigonometry and we learn how to calculate the height of buildings, which is really, really awesome. But we also go to the Shrine of Remembrance and we also uh, go to places like the Botanical Gardens. So what do we do in the city? It really, it's our classroom. We can do a whole lot of different things in there. But with the city, there are a lot of expectations as well. Just like we have expectations at the school, when we are in the city, we are representing the college. So we've got to ensure that we're arriving on time and we really, really are quite um, strong on these expectations. So we're wearing the correct uniform. Students are using their city experience bag. Something they'll get as part of year nine is a city experience bag. And it's a smaller bag that when they're traveling on public transport, um, it just makes it a lot easier in terms of being around the public. And of course, they're demonstrating college values at all times. You'll see on the left of the screen there or on the right, I'm not sure what it looks like on yours, but there's that chart of freedom versus responsibility. That's something that we talk a lot about in year nine. And we talk about character. This really lines up with character really well. Um, the things that you're doing when people aren't looking. And if you look at that, the more freedom you get, the greater responsibility there is. Uh, some of my personal greatest moments of teaching uh, and the relationships and some of the strongest of relationships that I've built with students have been a part of this city experience program and the trust and the responsibility that they show is unbelievable. But we've got to remember that with the more freedom that they get in the city, there is that greater level of responsibility. And we do have very, very high expectations of them when they're in there. Another key element of year nine, uh, coming into year nine, and one of my personal favorites is the career focus that we have. So we have, we start to talk a lot about careers and one of the main things that they do is the Morrisby assessment. So the Morrisby assessment is an assessment that they'll be doing in term one, where it's an aptitude test and it, it um, finds out their key skills. It tells you about their learning styles. Uh, it tells you about what subjects um, would be best suited for them at going into VCE, talks to them about tertiary uh, options, what would be best for them and talks to them about potential careers. So this is something that really becomes part of the conversation when we come into year nine. And it's something that when your teachers or when your child's teachers are talking, it becomes almost regular part of our conversation. You know, what are we doing now and how is it going to affect us when we're going into year 11 and 12, when we're going out into our careers? And this Morrisby assessment really helps guide that. So they do the initial test and then one of the fantastic things is they actually get to sit down with the Morrisby counsellor and they get to talk through their aptitude test. They get to talk through their results and they get to build a plan and they get to start talking about, okay, what does life look like after school? Because as we've talked about, this is a really crucial time in your child's life and they are building habits and they are forming the kind of person that they will be when they exit school. So to start having these career discussions and have a tool like the Morrisby assessment that all students will be completing will be absolutely fantastic. So what I'd like to now do is pass on to uh, one of our year level leaders, Mr. Darcy Valance, and he's gonna talk a little bit more about personal best and focus camps. Thank you very much, Mr. McGough. Yes, as Cal mentioned, my name's Darcy Valance and I'll be a year nine level leader in 2021. I'm very excited to get to know you and your children over the course of the year. I'm really excited about um, another year in the experiential program. Um, I'm here to talk to you about two key components of the experiential program. And first one off is the personal best project. So basically students have the opportunity to create a project on whatever they are interested in personally. They're given the framework to decide what they would like to focus on then go through like a design process and begin their ideas and start putting those ideas into creation. Students in previous years have designed and built furniture, remote control planes, surfboards, even created their own clothing labels. Uh, I think there's a few photos on the screen there for you to see. That's a few previous uh, examples of projects in the past. Um, so basically students collate all their planning and design process documents in an A3 uh, visual diary and then they will, they'll be using the, the track the students progress with a number of different entries including photograph evidence of their, uh, the physical part of their project as well. So there will also be a presentation to conclude the personal best project which parents will have the opportunity to attend. So this opportunity will allow uh, parents to come into the school 
and see what all the Year 9 uh, students have designed and actually put together and that will be showcased on the night. So the next key component is focus camps. So they are a vital part of the Year 9 program which are based around holistic learning. They are an opportunity for students to develop uh, strong and meaningful relationships with not only their peers but also their teachers as well. Developing relationships outside of the classroom is a vital aspect to success uh, for students in Year 9. So Year 9 students are expected to attend three focus camps throughout the year and all three camps are two days, one night in duration and are at the same location. Our first focus camp is at the beginning of the year, right at the start, so Term 1, Week 3. And the reason for that is to really build that relationship with their class and also their teachers, which really sets up the year. We also have a focus camp in term two, which is Anzac Day themed, where the activities are based around mateship and team building. So this camp specifically builds from developing relationships in the first camp to being able to collaborate and problem solve um, as a team and in a class. Uh, and then our last camp, uh, is really just a celebration and it's really to cap off the year which has been had by the class and the teachers also get thoroughly involved as well. Activities will be revolved around, you know, fun, enjoyable ones um, and a huge feature of this camp, which many teachers get involved in as well, is a huge 50 metre water slide and I know uh, Mr McGough will be the first one in there as well. Um, an info pack will be sent out to you guys with further details and they'll be sent out soon. Well, that's about it from me. Look forward to meeting you in person. I'll pass this one off to Nadia Patella, the other year level leader. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Nadia Portella. I am the other year level leader for year nine in 2021. And I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to meet you all and work with your children, some of whom I've worked with when they were in year six. So it'll be exciting to see them back in the year nine courtyard next year. Um, this evening, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our community project and expedition. So community project takes place in semester two. And unlike in semester one, where we do personal best in our experiential program at school, we learn about others in semester two by doing the community project. And the purpose of this, um, this project is to build students, uh, their understanding and their empathy towards others, and also to get them thinking about vulnerable groups in their local, global, national communities and how they can take action to support those groups. So unlike personal best, for this opportunity, students work in groups and they get to choose an issue that they think really matters to today's society and come up with a campaign that seeks to promote um, the issue and actions that can be taken to support the group that they have chosen. It does have a showcase day similar to personal best. However, this one's all about bringing the students together to share their learnings and to share the issues that they've chosen to um, pursue for their community project. But another really exciting opportunity um, in semester two. One of the other really exciting opportunities of our experiential program that you've already heard briefly about tonight is our year nine expedition. So the year nine expedition is planned with the outdoor education group who are a designated organization who plan outdoor adventures for young adults. In 2021, we'll be traveling to the Murray River where students will participate in bushwalking and canoeing. They'll also be responsible for the running and facilitating of camp, which includes setting up and packing up each day, cooking meals, making sure that there is water to wash the dishes with and all those sorts of things. So I dare say a couple of parents watching tonight would probably think those are some useful skills that your children can learn on expedition. It takes place in the last week of term two. We leave very early on the Sunday morning and return pretty tired, but definitely with high spirits on the Friday afternoon. It's a really key component of the Year 9 program and it's a moment where we really see some significant um, growth in our young adults going through the program. And it is a, um, an important expectation that opens up a lot of extracurricular opportunities for students um, in the senior years as they present. Now I'm going to hand back to Christy, who is going to facilitate our Q&A time. Thank you, Nadia. We do, we do have a few questions that have come through, but it's not too late to add any more if you still have some further questions to ask. So my first question I'm going to put to Mr. McGough. Mr. McGough, can you tell us about what safety measures you put in place for the City Experience Program for our Year 9 students? 
Look, so one of the main things that we do uh, with City Experience when we go in there is the first trip that we do is completely guided by the teachers. So I think the main safety thing that we do for the students is we really teach them how to interact in the city. So when we go in there, the first experience is completely guided. So we meet the students at the station in the morning, we teach them how to catch the train in, we catch the train in with them, and then we do the day's activities with the students just like a normal excursion. So we take them in there and we have these conversations about what is safe in the city, what toilets should we use, where should we go in the city, and we actually walk them around the city and we educate them on all those different things. So our first trip is a fully guided trip where we teach all those things. And then after that, it's about supporting the students individually as they come up and look, my thing would be if there is any concerns for a particular student or anything like that, always talk to your teachers, always talk to the home group teacher and us and we'll be always able to help that. But we do take them through the process of going through a fully guided trip where we teach them how to interact in the city and that's been really effective with the students in the past and we find that, you know, after that first trip, they're not wanting to really be around us anymore and they were all really, really good at it. So that's what we do with that. Thank you, Mr. McGough. All right, next question I'm going to pass over to Ms. Portella. So, Ms. Portella, can you tell us how many students there are in a group for the expedition? Yeah, absolutely. So, in each um, expedition group, we aim to have no more than 14. So, a normal group is sized somewhere between 12 to 14. And I think it's important to note as well with the expedition groups, unlike focus camp, where the majority of the time is spent with the home group, in expedition, we do look to make sure that there is a mix of students from all different home groups, which is a really good opportunity for them to get to know people beyond uh, their main class. And they may also be on expedition with a teacher who is not their main teacher. So a good opportunity to keep building that connectedness to school that Cal was re referring to earlier this evening. All right, terrific. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, Mr. V, Mr. Valance, next question is for you. Um, can you tell us where the students sleep when they're on focus camp? Are they in cabins like they would have been on on previous camps or do they sleep in tents? If you could give us some information on that, that would be terrific. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so the, uh, the students will be obviously camping and they'll be in tents. So before we go to the camp, um, we are actually, you know, we, we sit down with the students and we ask them their preferences who they would like to stay with um, in their tent and they are fully provided with a tent once they arrive there. All right, thank you, Mr. V. So the next camp, uh, next question is for Mr. McGough. Mr. McGough, are you able to tell us if the camps are compulsory? Yeah, so for the yeah, E9 program, we do expect that the students do come to all focus camps and we see it as an actual, absolutely pivotal um, element of the year nine program. I think, one of the key things for me that the year nine program offers is that connectedness to school and building relationships with teachers. And if I think about the really key, uh, the key element of that, it's focus camp. And if I look at my personal experiences with focus camp and the experiences of our teachers, the unique opportunity that you get to go away on a two day camp uh, at the very start, particularly the one at the very start, the unique experience that you get to go away with your home group and have two days with them is absolutely crucial and by doing that at the start of the year and throughout the year it erases a lot of those potential issues that may come up because that relationship is there they've got someone um, in their home group teacher or other teachers that they build connections with that they can go to throughout the year which is really important so yes they are 100 percent compulsory to go to yes thank you mr mcgough i'd now like to pop the next question on to Ms. Portella. Um, do students participate in work experience in Year 9? So in Year 9, students do not participate in work experience. This is something that occurs in Year 10. However, it is something that we do start to talk to them about in semester two when they start to plan their work experience for year 10. And the Morrisby assessment and the, all the careers and pathway talks that we do have throughout the year definitely help students make that decision um, in the final term of year nine. All right, thank you very much, Nadia. So that's all the questions that we have time for for tonight. So apologies if we haven't got to every single question. What we will do is we will respond to any questions that we haven't been able to answer this evening um, and get back to you before the end of the week. Again, if you have any other questions that you haven't asked tonight, please feel free to contact us at the college or send any of us an email. Information pack will be coming out within the next week, so look out for that on Compass. Thank you very much for joining us tonight.